Hey, what's up everybody? It's Larry Lurcy. Welcome back to the channel. I've got another video here for you on this upcoming Luminar AI software. I'm playing around with the beta version and trying out some of the individual pieces and parts of it. And today's video is going to really focus in on the portrait aspect. We've looked at an overall of the software. We looked at some of the landscape features. And today we're going to focus in on just some portrait type tweaks, things you would do with a portrait to enhance it or change it or maybe morph it into something completely different. So we're going to really focus on portraits and jump in. Now the software isn't actually out yet. I'm using a beta version. So what you see may be a little different than the actual product, but you can go ahead and pre-order the software or if it's already out now, there's a link below where you can uh, order it for yourself if it looks like something you're interested in. I'll even give you a coupon code that you can use to save a little money on it. So you're ready to have some fun with some portraits. I think it's going to be great. Let's jump right in. Roll the intro. All right, so here's the image we're gonna work with today. I thought this would be a pretty straightforward image, which would be good for running the software through the paces. Just got a straight on image, uh, three quarter length. So we will be able to use a whole bunch of the tools in Luminar AI on this one. We've even got um, some space here at the bottom that needs to be cropped out so we can play with that cropping tool as well. So let's jump into the software and take a look. All right, so here we are in Luminar AI. Now keep in mind this is a beta version that I'm using, so it's possible that the version that you get will look slightly different, but should still give you an idea of what we're doing here. We're here in the templates, and it's going to recommend up here specific templates that would be good for this image. And um, you could try out some of those, and each one's got its own little subset of templates. But we're going to bypass the templates for now and go to edit because I want to go through the features individually. And we're going to start here by clicking the smiley face and going to portrait. And these are the kind of the four categories we're going to look at today, starting with face. Um, face light, pretty self-explanatory. What we're going to do is try and bring a little light to the face. Now, obviously, you're hoping to have done that in camera, but things don't always go as planned, and you can probably always have a little more light. Just to show you what this does, we'll push it all the way over. Really brightens the face, but we'll just give a tiny bit there. Uh, you've got the, the feature to slim the face here. Now, again, um, I don't know that generally I would recommend using this. Sometimes you do have people that come in and say they're really self-conscious about their cheeks or they have put on a bunch of weight recently and would like you to slim them down. That's not uncommon in the studio, but i um, just going to kind of show you how these things would work So if you want to apply them, but I wouldn't go through and just randomly do it to people because it's going to start changing their appearance, obviously. For example, if we were to slim her face, move that all the way over, it still looks relatively normal there, but if we do the before and after, you can see it's a pretty drastic change. So I don't think she needs any face slimming. We're going to leave her just as she is. Now the eyes, her eyes are pretty small in this image. It's going to be hard to tell, but we'll come in a little bit. And what you can do here is go through and change her eye color. So let's say you wanted her to have, um, I don't know, brown eyes. Click right there, and it pretty much does it for you. Uh, you could switch to whatever else you want. You could do a hazel. Um, We'll play with that for now. This iris visibility will kind of dial up or down that effect. And I think if you're too high, it's going to make it unrealistic. This iris flare is kind of adding that highlight in there and how much color versus highlight you have. We've got the ability to enlarge eyes. This might be uh, something that would come in handy if you've got someone who squints a lot when they smile or maybe they're in the bright light and their eyes are squinting a little bit and you want to try and eye open them up a little bit. It's always a little bit of a risk when you change sizes on someone's face, but I think this is one of those things that if you did um, very little bit to, probably wouldn't be a, a problem. Eye whitening is coming in here, whitening those whites around there. I don't generally mess with the whites because I think it's really easy to go too far, but you can certainly play with that slider if you dare. Eye enhancer. Let's slide this all the way over and show you what it does in the extreme. And it's kind of bringing in a little more um, contrast to it and sharpness as we bring that down. We'll give it a little bit of an eye enhancement. Again, I think you're going to have to be really careful with these sliders because you're going to push it all the way over and go, wow, that looks awesome. And then when you look at the final image, it's going to look unrealistic. So try and do it in moderation. Red eye removal, not a problem here. We can play the dark circles. 
She's got a little bit of circles under her eyes, but nothing massive. And let's do the before and after right up here. It's not doing a ton to those circles, but she doesn't really have terrible circles under her eyes. And improve eyebrows. This is basically going to give you this kind of a thickening up there, which um, is going to be, depending on your model, something you might or might not need. So based on just this face one, here is our before and after. The eyes are very bright here. I'm going to pull this down a tiny bit on that visibility just so it looks a little more realistic. Let's try that. That's a little better. Okay, let's jump down to skin. Oh, we got mouth. Missed that one. All right, so here's where you can add all kinds of tweaking to the lips. The, the saturation is one that I've found helps the most. The problem with redness is you start changing the color, and sometimes you'll, you'll have people that have a very specific lipstick color that they want, and I don't want to tweak that. I don't mind making it more saturated. I just don't want to change the color, and you can darken a little bit if necessary. Teeth whitening, not an issue on this one. So that's all of our face work. You can see by the little dot here, it tells us that we've used this. So if you're coming back later saying, what have I done to this? You'll be able to tell the ones with dots are ones that we've used. Okay, so skin is gonna kind of soften up this skin a little bit. Let's we'll slide it all the way over so you can see an extreme example. Really makes the skin go kind of porcelain. This girl doesn't really need that. We'll give her a little bit. She doesn't have much shine. You've got this skin defects. We'll click on it, see what it does, if it picks up on anything. Oh, kind of took away that little mole right there. Um, but doesn't do a whole lot. And that, I can't tell if that's a freckle or if that's some sort of a little blemish. Let's pretend it's a little blemish. Uh, you can click that and it makes it go away. So um, there you go on that. Pretty easy face retouching. You know, you can see we're just sliding this over and clicking that button. You could give someone an overall face retouch pretty quickly, which is nice. Okay. Let's try body AI. Now let's draw it back out. What this is going to do is basically shrink or expand the person, which again is very dicey territory to get into, but just to kind of show you what it does, if you wanted to slide to the extreme this way, really compresses her, move it this way, and it expands her. There's the before and after. Not many girls are going to come in and ask you to do that. Although it's possible that you could have a guy who's like a bodybuilder or something and wants you to make him look even bigger, and you could use that slider. And like I said, certainly possible you could have someone that said, hey, can you slim me down a little bit? I would just encourage you to be careful how much you use of that because um, it can just start looking really weird. This is the abdomen specific. Again, it's not going to be great to use with her because she doesn't really have any abdomen but you can push it out here and you can see it's starting to kind of pucker things and this makes the area bigger kind of spreads out the effect and just kind of show you what that does again it looks kind of weird here but uh, I would think that if you had a um, guy with a big beer belly or something like that maybe this would um, actually uh, be something that would work but you're going to have to be careful because it's like using Liquify. If you do go too far and you don't watch what you're doing, it's really easy to, to make it look weird. Finally, we've got high key. Now, this is basically lightening up this image uh, to make it into a high key image. Probably be good if we had done this on a white background, but we can try it on the gray just to get the idea. And you see it's going to start lightening things up. And I'll try sliding this up a little bit. You're just basically, as you can see, it's starting to wash things out and just give it a real high key look. This would be very handy on an image. Again, if you had this same type of an outfit but on all white, probably work wonderfully. But um, again, all these sliders aren't going to work on every image. But just to kind of give you an idea of what it does, there's your blacks. So this is just going to be something that you would play around with depending on the image and obviously your high key image or where you're going to use it the most. We've got this glow which I think sometimes looks cool, just kind of gives it this hazy type look. And you can come back here and add contrast and saturation. But again, I'm going to turn this back off because it's not a high key image and I don't know that we necessarily need that much done to it. So let's go back and look at our before and after. There we go. Pretty good so far. So that's going through using some of these things. We've changed the eyes, um, lightened up the skin, cleaned up some blemishes. Let's jump back now into the essentials and play with some of these. Now let's start with the composition. Now this is going to do the composition AI 
where the computer is going to go through, look at your image, and recommend a crop. Now, before it does it, I would say, obviously, we need to get rid of this area down here. And um, I would probably crop above this fold in the fabric because I want to get this curve, but I don't necessarily need all of this down here. And so I'd like to probably come in a little off the top and somewhere along here at the bottom. So we'll just click it and see what it does. Cross your fingers. Okay, so it brought us in some at the top, but as you can see down here, it actually left a little bit of this. It definitely left the fold, um, which isn't terrible, and probably was trying to keep her body in proportion, so uh, left that here. But I would definitely want to take that piece out, so what you can do, though, very easily, just grab on and slide it over, and I'd be inclined probably to crop it more like that for example you've got things here where you can change the perspective we can rotate it um, but we don't need that on this one I think just a simple crop is all we need let's go ahead and apply that um, enhance uh, I almost always use the enhance at, at some point on an image just because it gives it a little bit of pop let's push it all the way over so you can see what it's doing on this particular image um, mostly is working on in those eyes which is some of the stuff we did before it's mostly a attacking that background, honestly. So um, I don't know that we're going to need a lot on this particular one. Let's jump into structure and push that over. It's probably going to give us some sharpening here in the dress. Let's do the before and the after. Yeah, giving us a little through here, a little more texture. Let's jump down here to vignette. And uh, let's do choose subject. And then I'm going to Basically, you can slide this way to darken, this way to lighten, and we'll do a darker vignette. And again, you want to get to the point where you don't really see it. Once you start seeing it, that's too far on a vignette, in my opinion. So I'd probably go to there. That's enough that you can't really see it until you do the off on. Oh, I gotta save this, I guess. So, uh, we can jump, jump here into creative, see if there's anything we want to do on here. Um, the, the two that you would typically work with is sometimes this film grain, if you wanted to do that, or the dramatic. And let's hop into dramatic, which basically does this kind of sharpening contrast thing, but then also pulls away um, saturation. And let's see what that would do on this image by applying some. It gives it kind of an interesting look. I kind of like that. Let me dial it down a little bit. If you want that look but don't want to lose all that saturation, you can come back here to all that saturation back in. You can even pull back that lightness a little bit if you feel like it's gotten a little too light. I think that's pretty good. So there, right through all those steps, you've kind of given um, a really nice look that um, you could go ahead and export up here. You can even save that template. Now, um, one thing I would watch out for is if we drop back here in a portrait, you'll remember that we did change the eye color to hazel. So if you did apply this to someone else, if you like the overall look of it, you've got to remember that when you apply it on the next model, it's also going to change their eye color. So I would recommend naming this with hazel in the name, um, and then that tells you that it's changing the eyes to hazel and then doing some other steps. So we'll do it just for grins. We'll come down here and save. Then come back up here to template, my collection, go under the user templates, and we will rename this one Hazel Model. Then uh, anytime we want to, we can come right back here to our user templates and apply these changes to the next model if we really like this look. If nothing else, it gives us a jumping off point for the next edit. So that's kind of how you would work in the portrait arena on these images. I think it's some incredible tools here that if used in moderation uh, can really give you a good look, which by the way I should mention that if afterwards you look at this, you save it, maybe the next day you come look at it again with fresh eyes and say, man I've gone too far, all you have to do is slide this down and you'll slowly start returning to your old image. And so you can just dial it up to the extent that you think is necessary and then go ahead and export it. And there you go, a quick look at some of the things you can do with a portrait in Luminar AI. And it really is exciting to look at some of those possibilities. And it doesn't matter whether you're taking a regular portrait that you want to keep realistic and just kind of enhance some things, it'll do that for you. 
or if you want to take an image and take it a whole different direction and kind of make it to the point that it doesn't even look like the original person anymore, maybe for a composite or some other type of artistic piece that you're working on, you really do have all your bases covered with the software and it r works really quickly. I think what's really crazy is the fact that this is just a beta release. By the time the final product comes out and uh, maybe they've enhanced some of these things even more, it's just frightening the ability that you may have with the software. You've just got to decide how you want to use it. Love to hear your comments, what you think about the software, um, how you thought the features worked, and if it seems like something that you could even use. But I uh, would love to hear your thoughts, and I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.